Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at FrenchPod101.com. Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at FrenchPod101.com. Top 10 must know phrases for the restaurant. Let's begin. Oh my gosh, again, food. I'm so hungry. Une table pour trois, s'il vous plaît. Une table pour trois, s'il vous plaît. A table for three, please. Actually, I used that a lot when I was in Italy. Uh, but it was a table pour trois, per favore. A table pour trois, per favore. Anyways, you can use this phrase when making a reservation. You can change the number depending on how many people are with you. For example, to reserve a table for two, you can say une table pour deux, s'il vous plaît. Une table pour deux, s'il vous plaît. Pour une table pour un, for a table just for one, you will say une table pour un. Le menu, s'il vous plaît. Le menu, s'il vous plaît. The menu, please. Use this when you can see the menu on the table or the waiter forgot to bring one. This happens a lot. J'aimerais ceci, s'il vous plaît. J'aimerais ceci, s'il vous plaît. I like this dish, please. You can say this while indicating on the menu. It may come in handy if you're not sure how to pronounce a dish name. Yeah, I use that a lot myself, especially for Japanese food. Sans oignons, s'il vous plaît. Sans oignons, s'il vous plaît. Without onions, please. If you don't like something, you should memorize this. You can refer to anything else by substituting oignon with a different noun. For example, if you want to order a beverage without ice, you can say sans glaçon, s'il vous plaît. Sans glaçon, s'il vous plaît. Sans tomate, without tomatoes. Sans tomate. Pourriez-vous m'apporter du sel? Pourriez-vous m'apporter du sel? Can you please bring me the salt? Yeah, American people love salt. I don't know why, because I don't. You can use this phrase to ask for seasonings such as salt or pepper or a missing tableware. Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi. Excuse me. Use this to call the waiter's attention. Excusez-moi. While trying to make eye contact. Sometimes they might ignore you, unfortunately. Où sont les toilettes? Où sont les toilettes? Where is the bathroom? This may turn useful in any situation, not only when you are at a restaurant. For example, if you are in the street and ask, uh, où puis-je utiliser les toilettes? Where can I use restrooms or bathroom? Qu'est-ce que ce plat contient? Qu'est-ce que ce plat contient? What does this dish have in it? If you have allergies, you have to learn this question to make sure you can fully enjoy your meal. Yes, sometimes at restaurants they ask you if you have any allergies, but sometimes they don't, so please make sure to ask. Est-ce que c'est possible de payer séparément? Est-ce que c'est possible de payer séparément? Is it possible to pay separately? You can ask this question when paying the bill and if you want to split the amount. For example, when you go out with your friends, you can ask for a separate bill, right? Donc, euh, l'addition séparée. L'addition, s'il vous plaît. L'addition, s'il vous plaît. The bill, please. When you are ready to leave the restaurant, use this phrase to ask for the bill. It's common to pay at the table, and though you are not expected to give it a tip, it is always a kind gesture to leave some loose change. Yeah, in America, you are expected to do so. In France, not really. But you can give like one or two euros, you know? 10 phrases to survive at the station, because it's pretty hard in there. It's the jungle. J'aimerais aller à... I'd like to go to... J'aimerais aller à... I would like to go to... Then put the name of the place. Whether it's a city, if you're taking the train, or if it's a metro, you might want to know more precise location. So, if you can find someone at the ticket counter, just ask... J'aimerais aller à... And then they will give you the directions. Est-ce la bonne plateforme pour? Is it the right platform for? Est-ce la bonne plateforme pour? Is it the right platform for? Place. 
So if the station is really big, you would have a lot of platforms. And sometimes it might get confusing, so you might want to ask if you're on the right place. And if it's a metro, for example, or, or a tramway, uh, they go both directions, so you want to sh be sure you are on the right side of the platform to get the right direction, or else you would go the other way, and it can get tricky. À quelle heure est le dernier train? What time is the last train? À quelle heure est le dernier train? What time is the last train? This question sounds so Japanese. <laughs> if it's a big normal train, mm. they may have trains all day and sometimes even night trains. And if you are talking about a metro or tramway train, then depending on the cities, sometimes they finish later. But around midnight is a good safe spot for the last train. So try to get them before midnight. Sometimes they have some after, but that's mostly in bigger cities. So you don't want to take that risk. Où puis-je changer pour? Where do I change for? Où puis-je changer pour? Where can I change for? Place. I didn't change at the proper spot and ended up 250 kilometers away from where I was supposed to be. <laughs> ah, whoopsie. Be sure to check that. And be sure also to have enough time before trains to change. If you are going from a big train to a big train and going through a big train station, or even through a big city, sometimes they have many train stations, so you need enough time to go from one station to another. So be careful with that. Où est la gare? Where is the train station? Où est la gare? Where is the train station? Where is the train station? This is not a sentence to survive at the station. <laughs> because you're not in the station, you're looking for it. Ask your local policeman. Train stations are usually indicated, so they should be easy to find. But if you don't know, just ask anyone, really. Où est-ce que je peux acheter un billet? Where can I buy a ticket? Où est-ce que je peux acheter un billet? Where can I buy a ticket? If you are going abroad from France, sometimes you will have to queue at the ticket counter to get your ticket. Usually people speak English. Où sont les distributeurs automatiques de billets? Where are the ticket machines? Où sont les distributeurs automatiques de billets? Where are the ticket machines? In the station, duh. They are a bit everywhere. Est-ce que ce bus va à? Does this bus go to? Est-ce que ce bus va à? Does this bus go to place? You can ask this to the driver of the bus because sometimes, again, the, the map for all the bus routes can be pretty tricky to understand and you cannot really be sure if you are on the right side of the road to take the right bus in the right direction. So you should ask your bus driver if you're not sure. Où est l'arrêt de bus? Where is the bus stop? Où est l'arrêt de bus? Where is the bus stop? Depending on the city, you will have many bus lines. So you want to find the right bus stop for the right bus line. So if you find a bus stop, it may not be your right line. So be sure to check that too. Le train a du retard. The train is running late. Le train a du retard. The train is running late. It is indeed. Mostly buses are late in France. Trains are okay-ish. They can depart on time. Don't expect them to be really precise. But still be on time just in case it leaves on time this one time. That was a lot of time. Timey time. Top 10 phrases tourists should never use. Let's begin. C'est dégoûtant. That's disgusting. C'est dégoûtant. That's disgusting. Even if you are not a tourist, you should never use this sentence. Yeah, that's not really nice to hear. Mon pays est meilleur. My country is better. Mon pays est meilleur. My country is better. This uh, definitely sounds racist, so it's better to avoid it. Je préférerais être chez moi. I'd rather be back home. Je préférerais être chez moi. I'd rather be back home. Even if you like traveling, sometimes you feel like you prefer to be home. However, it's better to keep uh, that thought to yourself. Yeah, that's true. Ta gueule. Shut up. 
ta gueule, shut up. Never say this to anyone unless it's an intimate friend. Wow, a lot of people use that when they argue with other people that they don't know. I have before. Je ne suis pas très intéressé par votre culture. I am not really interested in your culture. Je ne suis pas très intéressé par votre culture. I am not very interested in your culture. This is not offensive, but you make a bad impression. Right. Je n'aime pas rencontrer de nouvelles personnes. <laughs> I don't like to meet new people. Je n'aime pas rencontrer de nouvelles personnes. I don't like to meet new people. Yeah, being honest is good, but uh, sometimes you may sound rude. And I know what I'm talking about because I am really honest. On n'a qu'à aller manger à McDonald's. Let's just eat at McDonald's. On n'a qu'à aller manger à McDonald's. Let's just eat at McDonald's. French food culture is rich and people are proud of it. So avoid saying such a thing if you don't want to hurt your French friends' feelings. Yeah, but we do love burgers too, actually, so sometimes we go to McDonald's. Je m'en fous. Boring. Je m'en fous. Boring. This is a strong expression and it's not only about boredom, it also means that you couldn't care less. In certain situations, This would be extremely offensive. Mm -mm. Ça a un goût affreux. This tastes awful. Ça a un goût affreux. This tastes awful. If you can avoid saying this, at least try smiling when you say it. Je vais passer la journée à l'hôtel. I am going to spend the day in the hotel. Je vais passer la journée à l'hôtel. I'm going to spend the day at the hotel. People are not likely to get upset if you say this, but you won't look smart. Yeah, why go on a trip if you want to spend your day in the hotel? Useless, right? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Une dame demande un renseignement au libraire. Quel livre voulait voir la dame? Excusez-moi, je voudrais jeter un œil sur ce livre sur cette étagère. Quel livre voulez-vous? Le livre sur les voitures. Un moment, s'il vous plaît. Celui-ci C'est ça. Et voilà. Quel livre voulait voir la dame Une dame demande un renseignement au libraire. Quel livre voulait voir la dame Excusez-moi. Je voudrais jeter un œil sur ce livre sur cette étagère. Quel livre voulez-vous Le livre sur les voitures. Un moment, s'il vous plaît. Celui-ci C'est ça. Et voilà. Un homme et une femme regardent le menu d'un restaurant. Qu'a commandé le monsieur Que voulez-vous commander La pizza a l'air délicieuse. Je vais prendre ça. J'ai déjà mangé une pizza hier, donc. Ah, et pourquoi pas ce hamburger Ça m'a l'air bien. Je prends ça. Qu'a commandé le monsieur Un homme et une femme regardent le menu d'un restaurant. Qu'a commandé le monsieur Que voulez-vous commander 
La pizza a l'air délicieuse. Je vais prendre ça. J'ai déjà mangé une pizza hier, donc. Ah, et pourquoi pas ce hamburger Ça m'a l'air bien. Je prends ça. Un homme est au téléphone avec une clinique. À quelle heure doit-il y être Bonjour, comment puis-je vous aider Vous êtes ouvert jusqu'à quelle heure Jusqu'à 6 heures, mais il est préférable de venir avant 17h30. Très bien, ok. À quelle heure doit-il y être Un homme est au téléphone avec une clinique. À quelle heure doit-il y être Bonjour, comment puis-je vous aider Vous êtes ouvert jusqu'à quelle heure Jusqu'à 6 heures, mais il est préférable de venir avant 17h30. Très bien, ok. Un garçon lit son journal intime. Qu'a fait le garçon en premier aujourd'hui Il a fait très beau aujourd'hui. Je suis allé à la piscine cet après-midi et je suis allé voir un film ce soir. J'ai aussi étudié ce matin. C'était une très bonne journée. Qu'a fait le garçon en premier aujourd'hui Un garçon lit son journal intime. Qu'a fait le garçon en premier aujourd'hui Il a fait très beau aujourd'hui. Je suis allé à la piscine cet après-midi et je suis allé voir un film ce soir. J'ai aussi étudié ce matin. C'était une très bonne journée. Une femme et un homme regardent une photo. Quelle photo regarde-t-il C'est la photo de l'équipe de foot de ton fils Il est où Il est là. Oh, et c'est le plus grand de l'équipe. Il est plus grand que moi. Quelle photo regarde-t-il Une femme et un homme regardent une photo. Quelle photo regarde-t-il c'est la photo de l'équipe de foot de ton fils Il est où Il est là. Oh, et c'est le plus grand de l'équipe. Il est plus grand que moi. Want to speak real French from your first lesson Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. Top 10 life events you should be able to talk about in French. Let's begin. Naissance. Naissance. Birth. Quel is an interrogative adjective used in question to mean which or that. It has to agree with the noun that it precedes. With a feminine singular noun, it becomes quel. For example, that de naissance is feminine. That's why you have to use quel. For example, you can say quel est votre date de naissance, s'il vous plaît. This means could you give me your date of birth, please. Être diplômé. Être diplômé. Me. This means graduate. Graduation is an important goal in many people's life. For example, you can say, Après avoir été diplômé, je voyagerai un an partout dans le monde. Which means after I graduate, I will travel the world for one year. Avoir un travail. Avoir un travail. This means get a job. For example, you can say, J'ai eu mon premier travail à 18 ans which means I got my first job when I was 18. This sentence uses the past tense passé composé. The passé composé is a compound past tense that consists of two elements, the present tense of an auxiliary or helping verb and a past participle. Most verbs use the helping verb avoir. However, some use être. Se fiancer. Se fiancer. This means to get engaged. For example, you can say, tu es fiancé, félicitations, which means, are you engaged, congratulations. 
Fiancé is an adjective which means engaged. If the subject is feminine, it's fiancé. The next event is mariage. Mariage. This means wedding. For example, il y a beaucoup de mariage en juin parce que certaines personnes pensent que c'est un mois porte bonheur pour l'amour. This means there are a large number of weddings in June as some think it's a lucky month for love. Parce que introduces a cause. It simply translates to English as because. Parce que can also start a sentence. The next event is acheter une maison. Acheter une maison. This means buy a house. For example, j'achèterais une maison si j'avais plus d'argent means I would buy a house if I had more money. This sentence uses the conditional tense with acheter. The conditional is used to express what will happen given certain events or actions. Anniversaire de mariage. Anniversaire de mariage. This means anniversary. For example, pour un 25e anniversaire de mariage, on offre généralement de l'argent. Means silver is the traditional gift for the 25th wedding anniversary. In France, as well as in some other countries, the names of some anniversaries provide guidance for appropriate or traditional gifts for the spouses to give each other. For example, an eight-year anniversary is noce de coquelicot, puppy wedding. Prendre sa retraite. Prendre sa retraite. Retire. You can say mon grand-père a pris sa retraite à l'âge de 60 ans, which means my grandfather retired when he was 60. The retirement age is around 65 in France. It also depends on how many years you've been working. Voyager. Voyager. Travel. For example, you can say je rêve de voyager aux quatre coins du monde, which means I'm dreaming of traveling all around the world. Aux quatre coins du monde is an expression, literally it means to the four corners of the earth, and can be translated as all around the world. The next event is funérailles. Funérailles. Funeral. You can say les funérailles sont un moment de deuil et de souvenir, which means a funeral is a time to grieve and remember. Actually, funérailles is a formal word, and usually French people use the noun Enterrement, which literally means burial. How to ask for and give directions. Let's begin. The first pattern is Où est le, la, les? Où est le, la, les? Where is the? Où means where. There is a grave accent on Où to tell the difference between Où, which means or, but the pronunciation remains the same. Here is a simple sentence. Où est la banque, which means where is the bank. The next pattern is Je dois aller au. Je dois aller au. This means I need to go to the. Je dois means I have to or I need to and comes from devoir, which is an irregular verb. For example, you can say Je dois aller au commissariat, which means I need to go to the police station. Comment puis-je aller au? Comment puis-je aller au? This means how do I get to the? Comment means how. Puis-je means can I. Aller means to go. And au is the preposition you need to use before masculine nouns. For example, you can say Comment puis-je aller au musée? Which means how do I get to the museum? Est-ce qu'il y a un, une près d'ici? Est-ce qu'il y a un, une près d'ici? This means, is there a near here? For example, est-ce qu'il y a une bibliothèque près d'ici? Means, is there a library near here? Don't get confused with librairie and bibliothèque. Librairie means bookshop. Library in French is bibliothèque. The next pattern is, excusez-moi, savez-vous où est le, la? Excusez-moi, savez-vous où est le, la? This means, excuse me, do you know where the, m is? When you don't know the person you are speaking to, use vous 
instead of tu. Both mean you, but tu is informal and vous is formal. For example, you can say, excusez-moi, savez-vous où est le parc? Which means, excuse me, do you know where is the park? Est-ce que le, la, m est loin d'ici? Est-ce que le, la, m est loin d'ici? This means, is the, m far from here? Est-ce que literally means, is it that? A convenience of everyday French is that a phrase can easily be turned from a statement into a question. For example, you can say, est-ce que la poste est loin d'ici? Which means, is the post office far from here? Tournez à gauche. Tournez à gauche. This means turn left. This is the basic indication to go left. The first word tourner means turn. It is followed by à, which means to. Lastly, we have gauche, which means left. For example, you can say tournez à gauche au deuxième pâté de maison, which means turn left at the second block. Tournez à droite. Tournez à droite. This means turn right. This is similar to turn left. You just have to substitute gauche with droite, which means right. For example, you can say tournez à droite au troisième feu de circulation, which means turn right at the third traffic light. Allez tout droit. Allez tout droit. This means go straight. This is the basic indication to go straight. The first word aller means go and ends in the imperative form. The next two words tout droit mean straight. For example, you can say aller tout droit, puis tournez à gauche au prochain feu, which means go straight and turn left at the next light. Passer devant. Passer devant. This means go past. Passer means to pass and passer devant means to go past. Devant is a preposition meaning in front of. For example, you can say passer devant l'église, which means go past the church. À l'angle de. À l'angle de. This means at the corner of. This sentence may help you to indicate a particular place. For example, you can say c'est à l'angle de l'avenue, meaning it's at the corner of this avenue. An avenue is a big, wide street in an urban area. En face de. En face de. This means in front of. For example, la station de bus est en face du supermarché. This means the bus station is in front of the supermarket. Traveling in France by bus is easy and cheap. Every city has its own public transit system. Of course, it's easier if you speak a little French. Derrière. Derrière. This means behind. For example, le parking se trouve derrière la salle de cinéma. This means the parking lot is behind the movie theater. Se trouver is a transitive verb that means to be located somewhere or can be found. It can be about an object or a person. À côté de. À côté de. This means next to. À côté de means next to or nearby and is a very common word in French. It is used to indicate the relative physical positions of one thing to another. For example, you can say, Le restaurant est à côté du parc, which means the restaurant is next to the park. Entre. Entre. This means between. For example, you can say Le magasin est entre le café et l'animalerie, which means the store is between the coffee shop and the pet store. In French, café refers to both the drink and the place where you can drink it. Animalerie is a pet shop. 10 phrases to help you in an emergency. Let's begin. Appelez la police, s'il vous plaît. Call the police, please! Use this phrase when you need someone to call the police. In France, you call 17. 
They should be caused if there is a need of police intervention. For example, an accident on a public highway, public disorder, aggression, a robbery, a burglary, etc. Avez-vous de la fièvre? Do you have a fever? Use this phrase when you want to check someone's temperature. Generally, when seeing this sentence, you place your hand on the person's forehead to feel if it's warm. <gasps> J'ai perdu mon passeport. I lost my passport. Use this phrase when, unfortunately for yourself, you lose your passport. In this situation, find and contact the nearest embassy or consulate from your country. Ouf. Je pense que j'ai mangé quelque chose de mauvais. I think I ate something bad. Use this phrase when you are not feeling very well due to intestinal discomfort and you want something to help the pain. J'ai besoin d'un médecin. I need a doctor. Use this phrase when you are not feeling very well. If you are sick, you must see a doctor. Je ne retrouve pas le chemin jusqu'à mon hôtel. I can't find the way back to my hotel. Use this phrase when you are lost and can't go back to your hotel. In this situation, you can try to find a reputable store. Explain your situation to one of the employees and they will maybe help you. An offline map app is also useful. Y a-t-il une pharmacie dans le coin? Is there a pharmacy nearby? Use this phrase when you need to find a pharmacy without going too far. Do not hesitate to ask a shopkeeper around you. They might know better than the average person on the street. Pourriez-vous m'aider? Can you help me? Use this phrase when you need assistance and you want to ask someone. You can add excusez-moi, excuse me, at the beginning of the sentence to be more polite. Je suis perdu. I am lost. Use this phrase when you are lost. As I already said, do not hesitate to ask to someone like a storekeeper or a police officer to help you. J'ai besoin d'une ambulance. I need an ambulance. Use this phrase when you need an ambulance to come. Usually you can call 112, the European emergency number, even if you don't speak French. Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So, start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words, and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster, at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. 
Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. Five sentence patterns for beginners. Let's start. Je m'appelle. My name is. You can use this when you introduce yourself to others. Using this pattern, you can say, je m'appelle Claude, which means my name is Claude. Je suis de. I am from. Use this when people ask you where you're from or when you want to include it as a part of your self-introduction. Où est? Where is? Here we have où est, which means where is. For example, you can use it to say où est la gare, which means where is the station. It's very useful when you are lost in France. J'aime. I like. When you want to express that you like something, you can use this pattern. J'aime. In French, to like and to love are both translated with the verb aimer. If you want to sound less passionate, you can add the adjective bien. For example, j'aime bien le chocolat. If chocolate is really your thing, you can say j'adore le chocolat. Adorer is a verb we can translate as to love or to adore. In a sentence, you can say j'aime le chocolat to mean I like chocolate. Je n'aime pas. I don't like. You can use this pattern when you want to express that you don't like something. For example, you can say je n'aime pas les choux de Bruxelles, which means I don't like Brussels sprouts. Top 10 language learning strategies. So let's begin. Liez-vous d'amitié ou mettez-vous en couple avec une personne française? Befriending or dating someone who speaks French. So I think that's a really great strategy to, to learn the language if you speak every day with a person that is your friend or your boyfriend. Regardez des films ou écoutez de la musique en français. Watching movies or listening to music in French. So I think it can help you to learn the language more easily if every day you watch some movies, if, even with subtitles like this, it helps you to see what is written and everything. Lisez des journaux français ou magazines français. Read French newspapers or French magazines. So that will help you very much with the language because you will see words that you've never seen before and eventually you can look them up in the dictionary and like this you can know what it means. Enregistrez votre voix et comparez votre prononciation avec des français natifs. Record your voice and compare your pronunciation with native French speakers. So I think that really helps with the accent. Like this, you can hear how you sound. You can watch my videos again and like this, you can compare how I speak with how you speak and you'll see if it matches or not. Téléchargez des pistes de dialogue et écoutez les conversations françaises. 
download dialogue tracks and listens to French conversations. So that will really help you with the accents, you know, the way everybody talks. You will be able to learn new words and you will be able to, for example, if they ask a question, you're able to answer. Répétez les expressions que vous entendez à voix haute, encore et encore. Repeat the phrases that you hear out loud again and again. So I think that's a really good strategy in order to learn French, to repeat over and over again what you just listened to or what you just learned, because it will help you uh, to have that in your mind and you'll be able to say it more easily. Revoyez toutes les leçons sur frenchpod101.com pour les maîtriser complètement. Review all the lessons on frenchpod101.com to master them completely. That will really help you to speak better French if uh, you go back and review all the videos that I have done or other French native have done. Um, and yeah, like this, you will be able to master it really completely and you'll be able to use it in quite a few different um, situations. Lisez les phrases lentement au début, après relisez-les et augmentez votre vitesse. Read sentences slowly at first, then reread them and increase your speed. I think that's a really thing to do because at first you want to have the pronunciation right. So it's better, you know, to decompose the word little by little and then say, when you're going to be more comfortable, you'll be able to say it like really quickly. Donnez-vous des petits et mesurables objectifs pour apprendre avec des dates limites propres. Set small and measurable learning goals with your personal deadlines. So I think that's really good if you give yourself some deadline and do not try to learn too much at first because you might just quit if you do that. So that's better if you give yourself, you know, little by little to, to learn and uh, give yourself deadline as well. That's a really, really good thing to see if you improve or not. Essayez des leçons qui sont plus difficiles pour vous surpasser et vous améliorer rapidement. Try harder lessons to challenge yourself and improve faster. So at first you're going to learn those quick and simple words, but then you want to challenge yourself and learn more complex sentences, for example. So that's better if you try to learn harder lessons. Computer words. I don't know anything about computer, come on. <laughs> so computer words, let's go. Clavier, a keyboard, taper a text avec le clavier type text on keyboard. It's the same word as piano and everything that has um, touche, some those little squares, <laughs> buttons, yeah. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> Souris, mouse, same as English, the mouse is associated with an animal. So, souris, uh, cliquer avec la souris, click with the mouse. Next one is Casque audio. Casque audio is headphones, so listening music with my headphones. Écouter de la musique dans le casque audio. You can also just say casque, you don't have to add the audio at the end. Moniteur, monitor. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Regarder un film sur le moniteur. Watching a movie on the monitor. Like because I like movies. Imprimante. Imprimante is a printer, so imprimer avec l'imprimante, print with a printer, <laughs> so that works. Jobs, hey, that's a nice one. So jobs, first job is infirmière. Nurse, mon père est infirmier, my dad is a nurse, which is true. Hi. <laughs> infirmière is uh, for women and infirmier will be for men. Officier de police, police officer. Or you can just say policier. Ce policier est trop méchant. This police officer is so mean. C'est un gentil officier de police. It's a nice police officer. He show me the way and stuff. Employé de bureau. Office worker. It looks boring being an office worker. Je suis employé de bureau. I'm an office worker. 
simple. Next one. Ingénieur. In engineer. Um, wouldn't it be nice to marry an engineer? Ce serait plutôt sympa de se marier avec un ingénieur, non? Yeah, I said something nice. Great. Uh, programmer, which is programmer. Uh, I thought we did computer world already. <laughs> Le programmeur programme un programme. The programmer is programming a program. <laughs> Three times the same word, you can use it easily. Et? Le programmeur fait un jeu. The programmer is making a game, which would be super nice. So, hi, and welcome back to Weekly French World. This week's theme is the weather. Ah, this should be nice. First word is chaud. Chaud is uh, warm. Aujourd'hui, il fait chaud. Today is warm, which is true. Next one is uh, clair. Clear. Clair is also used for light, like e clair is a lot of light. But also, the weather is good and no cloud and stuff like this. Le temps est clair. The weather is clear. Next one, ensoleillé. Sunny. If you study well the last week words, uh, la ville de Nice est ensoleillée. Nice is sunny. <laughs> Do you remember it? It also works. So, Nice est une ville ensoleillée. Nice is a sunny city. Next one. Next one is humid. Humid. Mm. It's humid in my room. Dans ma chambre, il fait humide. Which happens a lot in France. <laughs> Next one is... Mm, mm, nuageux. Cloudy. The weather outside is cloudy. That's not it. <laughs> in north of France, the weather outside is cloudy. Dans le nord de la France, le temps est souvent nuageux. <laughs> it's often cloudy. So yeah. <laughs> The end. <laughs> so see you next week for the World French Word of the Week. And don't forget to check the website to get more words and more explanation. And don't forget to come back next week. <laughs> see you. Hey guys, my name is Pierre and I'm from France and welcome to this lesson. Today's lesson will be about what not to pronounce in French. You know, French is really annoying. The way you say it and the way you write it, it's really different. And I'm here to show you that it's not that hard if you know the basics. So first, I would like to introduce you to the common silent letters. First, there is this letter, H. This is maybe the most common one. In French, H has no pronunciation. There is no aspiration, unlike English. When you see H alone, it's always silent in French. For example, in homme, which means man, you don't say the H. Same for haricot, which means beans, or for e, which is the French way to say um, when you're hesitating. Then there is this combination, ch, and when there is this combination, you have to say it. It's almost never silent. For example, cheval, which means horse, and then échec, which means chess. But of course, in French, there are many exceptions, and there are those two words are exceptions. Echo, which means echo, like in English, and choral, which means choral, like in English. H is silent here. You have to say just the C, echo, choral. Don't focus too much on those exceptions, because um, usually it's always never silent, but if you really want some examples, just try to remember those two because maybe they are the most common ones, but don't focus too much on exceptions again. Then, let's move on to the next letter, which is OR. This letter is quite, like, never silent, but in some cases, like when you see the combination ER in verbs, you have not to say the OR. It's always silent. For example, in the verb manger, which means eat, or parler, to speak, you have not to say the or. It's always that for the verbs, which are with e or. Then you've got some other words that are using the same rule, like premier. Just try to remember this one. It means first. And here you don't have to say the or. Let's move on to the next letter, which is X. This one is really easy. There are three patterns that you have to remember. 
and then after that you're done. It's really easy. Those patterns are wa, o, e. You see, I don't say the X. Wa, o, e. It's always silent. Here are some examples. Voice, voix in French, no X. Oiseau, which is the plural for birds. So like many birds, usually you don't have X, but here it's like a plural, the plural form. And then heureux, which is the adjective for happy. Many adjectives have this termination and you have to say it and you have not to say X. Let's move on to the next category, which is STPD category. It's almost always silence when it's at the end of a word. To remember that, here is a kind of little trick for you. You can think that French is stupid. And in this word, you see all the letters that are almost always silent. S, T, P, D. Stupid. So here is an example. Le petit loup est méchant, which means the little wolf is nasty. So here there is petit, you don't say the T. Loup, you don't say the P. Et, which is kind of an exception. Uh, here you see S and T. And you don't have to say it just for the verb to be. So just remember that when you see EST, this is a common question. Don't say the S and T. But usually when you see the word EST, which means EAST, you have to say it. So this rule is only when you see one letter at the end. When you see more than two letters, this is different. And then there is MÉCHANT, T. You don't say the T. But of course, there are exceptions. And here are the two main exceptions that you have to remember. When you say son, fils, you have to say the S. And then there is this little tricky word, plus. Sometimes, plus, you don't say it. You don't say the S. But when you say the, the, when you say the word plus, as more, you mean more, you have to say it, plus. So when there is the S, it means more. When there is not this S, like when you say just plus, but it's the same writing, you don't. It means less. So this is a kind of tricky word. And then there is this combination with S. S is, of, is often the mark of the plural, but sometimes it's not, and you also don't have to pronunciate when you add it after P, T, or D. So here are some examples. Temps, which means time. Debout, which is the plural form for um, pieces. Debout, you add the S because of the plural and you don't, say, you don't say T or S. And then there is D. Tu prends, which is uh, you take. And always when you conjugate verbs, you often have D and S and you don't say it. So these are the main letters that are silent. STPD, French is stupid. Then you've got some letters that are sometimes silent, sometimes they are not. So you just have to remember which words are like that. Those letters are B, C, F, G, J, L, Z. So here are some examples, like maybe the main ones just try to remember them and then only experience will help you to know which word are not silent. Plomb, which means plumb, you don't say the B. Like the B is quite rare. Usually you don't have words with B at the end of the word. Then you, you have pork, which means pork or pig. There is the C and you don't say it, por. Then this adjective, gentil with the L, you don't say it, but usually words that ends with an L, you have to say it. So this one is really a big exception, gentil. Clé et serre, qui, and dear. There is an F, but you don't say it. But many words, you have to say the F. So remember that. Then for J, long, it means long. So in English, you have to say the G. In French, you don't say it. 
And then this one, Z, you often not say it in French, but sometimes you have to say it. Here you don't say it. Che, which means that I'm going to my place, I'm going to your place, to, translation for to. Ne, which means nose. Ri, for rice. And assez, for enough. So here are some examples that you have to remember. So, so far we've seen five different patterns. H or X, if you see H alone, or in ER only in verbs, and in the, in the adjective premier, and X in those three patterns, wa, o, e. You have to be silent. You don't say those letters. So this is the first, the three letters that are important for you to remember. And then there is S, T, P, and D, the, which is almost always silent. So this is the main one that you have to remember in addition to those ones. S, T, P, and D. French is stupid. And then you've got those letters that are more tricky. B, C, F, J, L, Z. And you have to remember some examples. And if you really have to remember one category, I think you should really remember with the the. Because there are many words with these exceptions. Let's move on to the training part. Here are some sentences. I'm going to read them, and you will see which letters are not or are silent. Try by yourself before I'm going to say it. So here is the first one. Did you try? OK. The answer is, ils ne sont pas assez grands. Ils ne sont pas assez grands. So here, there is this S that is silent. And there is this T. And this S is not silent due to the liaison, which is introduced by the, this vowel, A. In the next lesson, I'm going to deal with the French liaison, so don't worry about that. For now, it's only common silent letters. So you have to say it here, but usually it's silent, so don't worry for that. And then there is the Z and the D and S that are silent. Ils ne sont pas assez grands, which means they are not big enough. Ils ne sont pas assez grands. Let's move on to the next one. Did you try? Okay. The answer is, je suis heureux d'être amoureux. Je suis heureux d'être amoureux. So here, again, there is a liaison. Because H is silent, and here there is a vowel. But don't worry about that. Here, X and X, you don't have to say it. Je suis heureux d'être amoureux. It means, I'm happy to be in love. I'm happy to be in love. Je suis heureux d'être amoureux. Next one, this one, is a bit longer. Try by yourself. The answer is, les chevaux courent plus vite que les bœufs. Les chevaux courent plus vite que les bœufs. Les chevaux courent plus vite que les bœufs. Here, there is an S. You don't say it. Here, there is an X, you don't say it. The T here, the S here, even though it means more, you don't say it. Because here, there is an adjective after that, and when you say plus with an adjective, plus with an adjective, if there is no vowel, you don't say it. So here, plus vite. This S, and then B. You don't say the F, and you don't say the S. But please be careful, when there is no S at the end of B, you have to say the F, buff, but here you don't say it. This sentence means the horses run faster than the cows, which is in French, les chevaux courent plus vite que les bœufs. Then there is this sentence, try by yourself. The answer is, mes cheveux sont trop longs. Mes cheveux sont trop longs. It means, my hair are too long. And here, all the words have a silent letters. Mes cheveux sont trop longs. 
mes cheveux sont trop longs. And this one now, try by yourself. J'ai pris plus de temps que prévu. J'ai pris plus de temps que prévu. So here there is this silent s, but here you have to say it. J'ai pris plus de temps, more time. So you have to say it. It's different, even though here it's more, but it's with an adjective. Here it's plus alone. So you have to say it because it means more. Then there is temps, P and S, you don't say it. And this is fine. J'ai pris plus de temps que prévu. I took more time than expected. J'ai pris plus de temps que prévu. Then the last one. Try by yourself. This one is a little bit tricky. So the answer is, à l'est du parc, il y a des noix qui ont poussé. À l'est du parc, il y a des noix qui ont poussé. So here, you can see that I have to say est, because it's not the verb to be, it's not the verb être, it's est. So in French, you have to say s and t here. So, à l'est. À l'est du parc. Here again, there is a c, but you have to say it. This is not one of the words I wanted you to remember. So, parc, you have to say it. Il y a des, you don't say it, noix. Here, again, there is the pattern O-I-X, so you don't say it. Qui ont, here there is this silent T. And then, pousser. À l'est du parc, il y a des noix qui ont poussé. At the eastern part of the park, some nuts started to grow. À l'est du parc, il y a des noix qui ont poussé. So, did you try and did you manage to do it? It's okay if you don't have a perfect score. Just, it's practice. You need to learn and it's like, it's, it's normal to fail. So you can watch this video again and try the sentences again and remember all those patterns. Next lesson, I will introduce you to the French liaison. But for now, it's only silent letters. That's all for today. If you like the video, please leave a comment on the sections below or you can hit the like button or share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do it. The button is down below. And if you want some more resources on learning French, go to our website, frenchpod101.com. You will see many French lessons. And I hope to see you again for more French lessons. Bye, guys. Hey, guys, it's Pierre from France. And welcome back for a new video, this time about French food. Top 10 French dishes and related vocabulary. This is today's topic, so it would be less about grammar, but more about like food and good stuff. So without further ado, let's get started with some food. And the first one, the most famous food here is fromage, le fromage, cheese in French. This is really important in France. We eat a lot of cheese and it's not like um, any kind of cheese. You know, when you do, um, when you eat, in France, there is, you can do a full course, which means you do entrée, plat, fromage, dessert. It means like first course, main dish, cheese, dessert. So this is quite common to do that in France. And personally, um, with my family, I do that every day. So you start with some entrée, like uh, salads or um, tomatoes, and then you've got the main dish, and then some cheese. And that's what is interesting here. You can eat like any kind of cheese. Usually you add bread with it, but you eat you cheese like that. And there are many, many different kinds of cheese in France. And usually it's original stuff. It means like, depending on where you are in France, so this is a super nice map of the France nation. And then depending on where you are, you will find some famous cheeses. And like the most famous one, you can find them everywhere, but some of them are really difficult to find sometimes. So there are many different kinds of cheese. Here, 
or some adjectives that you can use to describe cheese. Le fromage est dur, like the cheese is hard. Sometimes the cheese is hard, it's dur. Sometimes it's soft, le fromage est mou, c'est un fromage mou, mou. Or sometimes it's creamy, fromage crémeux, un fromage crémeux, creamy. And also, you know, cheese, French cheese is sometimes really smelly. And you have to say in French, le fromage sent fort, like a strong smell. It's smelly. You say that usually in French. Le fromage sent fort. Le fromage sent fort. And I would like you to know more about two different cheese that are quite famous. And the first one is personally my favorite. Le Comté. Comté. Comté is from this region in France, Franche-Comté, which you can notice is the name of the region. Franche-Comté, Comté, same. So here is a map of France, and Franche-Comté is somewhere here. So 1A it's for, stands for this, Comté. So this is really good, and this is a hard cheese, un fromage dur. Um, and then you've got this one, Camembert, also quite famous, which is from Normandy. Normandy is over there. This cheese is more um, creamy than uh, Comté, like the, um, around the cheese it's quite hard, but when you cut it, it's creamy inside and really good. And the more smelly it is, the more creamy it is. So here are for some cheese. Of course, there are so many cheeses. You can check by yourself for more cheeses. Let's move on to the next one. Bread, or in French, pain. You probably all know this cliche about France, baguette. Like old French people are always with their baguette under their arms. But it's not a cliche. <laughs> like personally, I used to buy a baguette every day. Like not all French people are doing that, but personally, I do that. So yeah. Um, that's the most common bread in France, and my favorite personally, baguette. This, like you, I guess you all know what is a baguette. So this, and usually you go to a bread shop called boulangerie in France, and boulangerie, you can find them like almost everywhere in France. It's really common, and that's why I can buy my bread every day by going there. But uh, in boulangerie, you can also find some croissant or um, other kinds of bread. Here are two other kind of breads that are quite common. I guess this one is the second most common. Pain de campagne. Pain de campagne. It's like a kind of bowl, you see? And in English, maybe you would say farmhouse bread. So in French, pain de campagne. Like campagne, pain de campagne. So this is, those two are quite famous and you can find them in almost all boulangerie, all bread shop. So this is quite common. And here is like what you can call sandwich bread in, in America, but um, in France you have to say pain de mie. And it's quite different, like th those two are really hard. Like you remember, we can also use this adjective for bread. Uh, like this is quite hard, but here it's really soft and you all know, can, you, you can find that everywhere in the world. Like when you say that, like to me, it's not like real bread. Like for, uh, for me, when you say bread, those two breads appear in my mind. So this is not bread and usually you can do sandwich with that. But in France, you use usually baguette or pain de campagne if you want to do some sandwiches. And I really like uh, doing uh, sandwiches with a baguette. This is so good and you should try it. So this is bread and maybe you wonder how we eat the bread. So first I said like sometimes sandwiches, but that's not the most common way. We eat it during the, um, the fr fromage step, like we eat cheese and, and bread, like it's classic. You have your piece of cheese and a piece of bread and you eat them together. But um, you can also eat them for breakfast and you put some jam and some butter and you eat that. This is quite common in France. Or sometimes we, you, you, you drink that with your cup of coffee, you've got your your bread and your coffee and you just eat them together. And also, when it's the time for the main dish, for the plat, you have some pieces of bread, usually like uh, 
on the table and you can eat them like that. Like it's really common. Like I think it's a bit similar to rice in Asian countries. Here bread you eat like you can eat, the, eat bread at any moment during your meal, especially during the main dish. So this is bread. Those two were uh, quite general food. But no, I would like to talk about more regional food. That's why I decided to draw a map. So here are some other foods that are regional, regional food. Like French food is really regional. So let's first start with Bœuf Bourguignon. Bœuf Bourguignon. It's from the region called Bourgogne. You probably know this region, like in English you say Burgundy. And this is quite famous for uh, white wine. And it's over here. So here is the Bourgogne region, Burgundy. And like this plate is quite famous over there, but you can eat that everywhere in France. But originally it's from this region. So it consists in a beef stewed in red wine. So if you want to explain that in French, you would say bœuf mijoté au vin rouge. Bœuf mijoté au vin rouge. Bœuf stands for beef. Mijoté is like stewed. And vin rouge, red wine. Bœuf mijoté au vin rouge. And usually you add with your beef, you add some other ingredients like pomme de terre, which is potato. Potatoes. Potatoes. Um, onions, like onion, 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 and some carrots, carrot, carrot. So these are um, the main ingredients that you can find when you cook a bœuf bourguignon. Um, this is quite uh, famous in France. And next one, let's move on to another region, which is, this region is called Lorraine, and this food is called quiche, or sometimes quiche Lorraine. Quiche Lorraine is a specific kind of quiche, but probably the most famous one. And Lorraine is this region. So here you can find quiche or quiche Lorraine. It consists in a tart like that. And you cook the tart with eggs and cream. And you add also on top of it cheese and uh, some bacon. But you can choose other ingredients, but that's the common uh, recipe. So in French, you would say tarte avec des œufs, de la crème, du fromage et des lardons. Tarte avec des œufs, de la crème, du fromage et des lardons. So here, tarte, tart, quite easy. Oeuf, eggs, cream, cream, cheese. I forgot to write it here in English, but you have to say fromage is cheese. And here, lardon, bacon, some sort of bacon. It's not like the exact translation, but in France, it's a really specific kind of um, bacon. Like, usually it's uh, some, some matches of meat. So here is um, like this, uh, the quiche. And usually you can eat that um, like when it's hot, but you can, after cooking it, you can just wait and eat it cold. And it is, it is quite good as well. So it's up to you, you can choose. So let's move on to the next one. This is Gratin Dauphinois, like from the southeast region. And maybe if you know the name of the city, Grenoble, which is close to Lyon, over there, you can, um, you can find this plate quite famous. But personally, I'm not from this region and I can eat uh, like Gratin Dauphinois. It's quite a common plate. So you don't need to go there if you want to try a Gratin Dauphinois. It consists in some pommes de terre, so you remember, potatoes, and you slice them, like tranché, pommes de terre tranché, sliced potatoes, and you cook them, uh, you bake them in, uh, in milk, like dans du lait. Pommes de terre tranché et cuites dans du lait, cuites dans du lait, baked in milk. So here is some kind of drawing. Um, you see this, the plate, and here are all the sliced potatoes. And you just add uh, milk and, of course, some uh, salt and sometimes peppers. And it's up to you, but this is the classic recipe. And you add milk and then you just bake that and you've got your meal. Gratin Dauphinois. It's quite easy, but quite good. And um, you should try it if you can um, 
have the opportunity to find it. Let's move on to the next one, which is Ratatouille. You probably all know the movie Ratatouille, the Disney movie, but it's a name. This is the name of a plate in France, and uh, it's from Provence. Provence. Provence is a region over here. So number six is over here. Six. Mm, like it's close to Nice, if you know the name of the city. Nice. Ratatouille is like something you eat more in summer, but it's hot. Um, it consists in some stew, like it's a stewed vegetables dish. So in French, you would say ragout de légumes. Ragout, ragout de légumes. So ragout, uh, sorry, ragout stands for uh, stewed and legume stands for vegetables. And here are the classic vegetables you're going to use if you want to do like a classic and uh, like an authentic, uh, authentic uh, ratatouille. You need to know all those uh, ingredients if you want to be real French, like for uh, your own ratatouille. The five main ingredients in ratatouille are those ones. First is tomate, tomato, tomate, tomate. Then courgette, which means zucchini, courgette. Then aubergine, aubergine, eggplant, aubergine. Then onion, we've seen this one before. Onion, in French, oignon, oignon, oignon. A bit different. And then garlic, which is in French, ail, ail, short word, ail. Okay? So those five ingredients are um, always in a classic ratatouille. So let's move on to the next one, which is, I'm sure you know it, crepe from the, the region over there, which is Bretagne. Bretagne. So maybe you know like sweet crepe, like you add some sugar or some jam or anything, but here is a bit different. This is crepe salé, which is salted cre crepe or crepes, salted crepes, crepe salé. Crepe salé. The main difference with like um, a sweet crepe is that you use buckwheat, buckwheat, which is in French sarrasin, sarrasin. So you cook your um, your um, your crepes with uh, this sarrasin, and you can call it as well crepe sarrasin, crepe au sarrasin, crepe au sarrasin. So you can say that. And you eat that like as a main dish and it's not a dessert, like it's a main dish. And the classic crepe, like the, the classic crepe salé would be with jambon oeuf fromage, like crepe jambon oeuf fromage, crepe jambon oeuf fromage, which means like crepe, like ham, egg, cheese, crepe. So you can say that uh, like in restaurants, in many restaurants, like not only here, but like over there, that was really good. But um, in every restaurant uh, where you can have crepe, there is always this classic, like jambon oeuf fromage, jambon oeuf fromage. So yeah, jambon is ham, oeuf is egg, and fromage is cheese. We've seen that before. And here is like a kind of drawing. Um, here is like the folded, the folded cre crepe. And here is in red the yolk and like some ingredients over there. But um, like you can like there are there are some uh, specialized shops which are called crêperie, 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 crêperie. This is like a crêpe shop, and it's really common over there. And even though in all France in the whole France, and over there you can like have your main dish, your plat, which is a crepe, like a salted crepe, and then for your dessert you can have um, your um, sweet crepe, and in those shops like there are many different kind of crepe, and there is this classic, but you can also find like with uh, salmon, um, with uh, chorizo or uh, mushrooms, you can find a lot of different kind of crepe. 
So you should try it. And it's not like a plate, a plate that you try once and that's it. That's a plate that you can try a lot of times because it's always different. And then let's move on to another one, raclette, which is not originally a French food. This is from Switzerland here. But uh, the influence of this plate was quite uh, important and it's really famous in France, in whole France now. But in this region it was really famous, like it's a um, plate that is uh, supposed to be eaten by people living in mountains. So over there, there is like it's really, there are a lot of mountains and this is a classic plate. So, like, if you ask French people, they would probably say that um, raclette is something French because we like eating raclette in winter. Um, raclette is the name of the plate, but also the name of the specific cheese that you use when you do a raclette. Like, it is... Um, the raclette consists in putting some cheese, like some melted cheese, on some potato. So here, it's your plate, there is this potato and you add this melted cheese on it. So this is like the base, but you don't eat like that. Usually you eat like a lot of potato, like it's kind of social activity where you take your potato, like there is a plate with potato, you each uh, person take the potato and then add the cheese on it and you do, you do that like a lot of times and you discuss with people. So this is like a really social uh, plate. And usually you eat that with charcuterie, charcuterie, which is a kind of like a lot of hams, like sausage or um, ham and like a lot of meat. Um, like uh, we have two different ways to say Sausage in French, you can say saucisse sometimes or uh, saucisson, which are two different kinds of sausages. Um, and you can buy all that in a boucher. You can go to the boucher, and if you go there, you can buy all that. It, it is called in English like butcher's shop. And yeah, like it's also quite common in France, and you can eat charcuterie. So charcuterie is, off, is, like, is almost always mixed with raclette but um, like it's also something that we like eating like for um, as an entree first course like you've got a plate with some uh, some ham some sausage and you can eat that together so yeah that's quite common and usually that's one of the most uh, favorite food for French people like it's not a real meal like you don't cook a lot but um, like it's a plate with a lot of different kind of meat and a lot of French people like it. And the last one, let's move on to the last one, which is from Paris and a quite recent dish. It is named Hachis Parmentier. At the end of the 19th century, the potatoes in France were supposed to be in in inedible, like you can't eat it. But someone called Parmentier while he was living in Paris, decided to create a dish made of potato. And this dish would be so delicious that everybody is gonna, will eat potatoes and will understand that um, you can eat potatoes. So um, it consists in uh, like a mix of potato and some chopped beef. So in French, you would say, mélange de pommes de terre et de bœuf haché. Mélange de pommes de terre, potato, et de bœuf haché, mix of potatoes and chopped beef. And you can add an S, uh, you can add an S here. Et de bœuf haché, mix of potatoes and chopped beef. Or you can also just remove the two S, like it doesn't really matter. Um, mélange de pommes de terre et de bœuf haché. So, haché parmentier. So you've seen that um, I presented a lot of dish a lot of dishes from France and here there is like a kind of big hole um, like it's not that I don't like this region but um, I didn't have time to choose uh, like to explain you all the different dishes that you can find in France so 
like here is really famous for the wine. This region is really famous for the wine, but there are also many plates that are famous. But I really wanted to talk about those stands because they are really important in France. So I hope you really like it. And if you want more videos, you can uh, like subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And if you really like it, you can like just click on the like button and uh, leave a comment in the comment sections. And if you want more videos on French learning, you can go to our website, frenchpod101.com. You will find a lot of resources to improve your French. That's all for me for today. It was Pierre and see you on next lesson. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.